How's it going, guys? Um, we'll get into 1 Samuel 3 with you here in just a minute. And that's where the message will be from. Um, we hope you guys are doing well. So 1 Samuel 3, we'll read a couple verses here and then get right into it. <clears throat> it's important, important, important to stay in your Bibles, to stay close to the Lord. So we encourage you to do that constantly. And uh, you got to do that for yourself, man. But that is so crucial, so key. So uh, make sure you're doing that behind the scenes. But this is just to kind of supplement that and strengthen you along the way. 1 Samuel 3, 1 Samuel 3 and verse number 8. The Bible says there, 1 Samuel 3 and verse 8. And the Lord called Samuel again the third time. He arose and went to Eli and said, Here am I, for thou didst call me. And Eli perceived that the Lord had called the child. Therefore Eli said unto Samuel, Go, lie down, and it shall be. If he called thee, that thou shalt say, Speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. And the Lord came and stood and called, as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel answered, Speak, for thy servant heareth. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to preach your word. And God, for us to draw what we need from it. God, give us what we need. Lord, you know what I need and everyone else, Lord, that is here or that will see it later, God. You know what we need, God. You're the all-knowing God. You're the all-powerful God. You're everywhere present at the same time. God, you never had a beginning. You won't have an end, Lord. And God, we know that you never change. And God, that's who you are. And we're glad we can hold on to those facts and truths about you, Lord, that will never change or diminish, Lord. I pray that, God, you would give us what we need today. God, please, I don't have the words to get it across, but I pray you would give me the right words and thoughts and spirit, Lord. God, what you put on my heart and my mind, God, that I could... Um, transfer to these guys, Lord, and that it would strengthen them. I pray that you would please, Lord, help us to live these things out. And God, I just ask that you would just take control of this in the next few moments, Lord. Please, you got to increase and I got to decrease, Lord. And please, Lord, help this to be exactly what we need, Lord. Hit us right where we need it. God, make us more like you. And God, help us to hear your voice through the preaching, God. I desperately ask you to come through and to take, take part and take control of what we're trying to do here, Lord. Um, God, we want these guys to live for you, but you've got to help us. And please, Lord, we're stepping out of the way so you can step in, Lord. And I pray you please help us with that. We love you. Thank you for your goodness. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, I don't know if I call this a familiar passage or not, um, but here in 1 Samuel 3, basically what's going on, Samuel is just a, a young guy, just a, a little boy, in fact, probably maybe 10 at the most. Uh, perhaps he's a little younger than that, but Samuel's growing up, and he's actually growing up in the temple of the Lord. Um, if you go back and trace back the story a little bit, his mom couldn't have children. His mom's name was Hannah, and she prayed and begged God so much so that she would go um, to the temple sometimes, and she would pray. And there was one specific time that she's there, she's praying, uh, I think close to the altar type of thing. She's praying, but she, no words were coming out. She was just praying in her mind and in her spirit, but her mouth was moving. And she's kind of pray, praying silently like we do now sometimes. But she's praying like that. And Eli saw what's going on and he got the wrong idea. He thought maybe she had been drinking. She's acting a little weird. What's going on? What's the problem with this lady? And she said, no, no, sir. It's nothing like that. She's just saying, I have such a sorrow in my heart um, because God has not allowed me to have children. Well, God turned things around for Hannah and God gave her Samuel. And Samuel's name means asked of God. Isn't that cool that she had prayed for this child, she had begged for this child, and that God would bless her. And, and you think, well, what's the big deal about that? Well, back in that day, it was a disgrace for a woman not to have a child. Um, that was so important in their culture. We've kind of moved away from that now, but that was such a big deal um, back then. So God gave her a child, Samuel, asked of God, and and. Because she had promised before Samuel was even born, she said, God, if you give this child to me, I'll give it to you. And that's exactly what she did. Um, she said, for this child I pray, and the Lord hath given me my petition, which I asked for. And what she did is she took care of Samuel until he was, uh, you know, grown up just a little bit. And then when they went to the temple one of the years, she allowed Samuel to go and live with the high priest whose name was Eli. And basically stay in the temple, grow up there, and serve God. And you say, man, well, that's kind of sad, you know, that she prayed for that child. God finally gave it to her, and then she had to go and give it away, basically. Um, I love how God takes care of his people. And if you look, just real fast, just a side note here, in chapter 2, 
verse, um, well, I'll pick it up in verse 20, halfway through it says, Of this woman for a loan which is lent to the Lord, and they went into their home. Basically, God says, I gave this child Samuel to Eli, and or to, to Hannah, and to, his, to her husband Elkina, and they gave it to Eli, they gave it to God for a loan, basically. God said, I loaned it to them, and they gave it to me. What did God do to take care of Hannah? I love this, this little detail. Verse number 21 of chapter 2, the Lord visited Hannah so that she conceived and bare three sons and two daughters, and the child Samuel grew before the Lord. Isn't that amazing? Oh this lady God. that couldn't have any children, That's this lady that was idea. barren, this lady that couldn't have a child, she prayed, she begged, God came through and gave her Samuel, and then she loans him to God to serve God. We think, oh, what a poor lady. What, how sad she must be, her only child. God says, you put me first, and I'll take care of you. And God gave her five children after that, three sons, two daughters, and God did a great work in Hannah's life. But as Samuel's growing up, there's a lot we could talk about. There was a lot of wickedness going on in Israel and amongst Eli's sons, which is a different sermon for a different day. But Samuel, even though he was a little kid, little boy, he loved God and he put God first. This was a time, in fact, in chapter 3, that the word of the Lord, it says in verse 1, was precious in those days. There was no open vision. Uh, God wasn't manifesting himself in those ways anymore. You weren't having miracles. You weren't having these great displays that you see sometimes in the Bible, like in the time of Moses and in the time of Elijah, even when Jesus and the disciples were there. God, there's miracles, there's healings, there's all kinds of things. People being raised from the dead. Wasn't like this at this point. In fact, I don't believe there was a prophet uh, amongst the people at this time. So it was a very dark time in Israel's history. Eli wasn't right with God. He was better than most, but still he wasn't right with God. His sons were trash. Right. They, they did all kinds of wicked, vile things in the name of God to make it worse. All kinds of wicked stuff, taking advantage of their positions. All kinds of stuff we could talk about. But this little boy Samuel, one night he goes to sleep. He gets in his bed and three different times the Lord comes to Samuel and he says, Samuel, Samuel. Samuel doesn't know what's going on. <laughs> He gets up and he'll run to Eli and, and wake Eli up. And Eli's thinking, what is wrong with this kid? Man, what did I feed him the wrong thing tonight? And he wakes Eli up and he said, did you call me? Eli says, no, I didn't call you. Go back to bed. Leave me alone. This happens three different times. The third time Eli starts to catch on, the high priest catches on and he says, I think God's trying to call this, call this boy. I think God's trying to get a hold of this boy. And he tells him what to do in verse number nine. He says, Next time this happens, Samuel, if he calls you again, say this, Speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. So he went back to bed. Verse 10, God shows up again. And this time, Samuel knows how to react. This time, Samuel knows exactly how to respond to God. And then God gives him his plan for his life. Listen, you know what he's saying here when he says, Speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth? Listen, I think Eli used to be a good guy, but at this point in his life, he's diminished. He's kind of given up the fight. He's kind of thrown in the towel. He's not going to try so hard anymore. He's gotten old. He's gotten, he, he's not healthy anymore. His, his body's starting to fail him, and he's kind of let his walk with God slip. But he did give some good advice to this young man. And he said, when God calls the son, you say, speak, Lord, for thy servant hear him. You know what he's saying? Say, I'm ready to hear God. I'm ready to hear. Listen, can we get back to that? Listen, that's what we need. We've gone to church so much. We know how to do it. We know how to dress. We know how to sit there. We know how to shake our heads at the right time. And we know what to say. But if we don't watch it, it can all be external and on the outside. And it can all be fake on the inside if we don't watch it. Can I tell you, we need to get back to this kind of heartbeat and this kind of heart's cry and this kind of heart's attitude to say, Lord, when you speak, I'm ready to hear. I'm ready to go serve you. I'm ready to go do something for you. Listen, I love how fresh this is to Samuel. It's not, it's not something that he's faking. It's not something that he had rehearsed, guys. In his heart, he's saying, God, I'm ready to hear. It's so simple. And it's so sincere, but I believe it's very needed and it's very missing. It's lacking nowadays. Listen, can it be, guys, that we go to church, we hear a message, you hear a message preached, and it just, you just go through the motions, uh-huh, 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 and your life never changes. Can I tell you, I think that happens very often. We're so used to it. We're so used to the routine, Brother Tom. We've got it all down. We know what's coming next. We know what you're going to say. We know what illustrations you're going to use. We know all those kind of things. Can I tell you, forget all that. 
what are what is your reaction to God? Because guys, even though I'm speaking, you know what? I want to get out of the way and let God speak to you. I want to get out of the way and let God from his word hit you right where you need it. And your life change so that it pleases not me, but him. That's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. Listen, are you ready to hear? In your life, are you ready to hear? When you, when you click play on this video, when you sit in church, when you come on a Sunday and you hear us preach to you the word of God, are you saying, I'm ready to hear, Lord. I, I'm ready to get something from you. We need it. We need it. We got so many Christians, and these guys can attest to it, so many Christians, they've sat in church for years. But because our attitudes are not right, we're not getting anything from it. And then we say, I'm kind of dry, I'm kind of cold, I'm, my Christian life is kind of boring, kind of dead. And then what do they do? They quit, they give up, they, they compromise, they, they give in and cave in in areas that we have no business messing around with. Let, let me tell you something. Are you and am I ready to hear when God speaks? That needs to be our heart attitude. That needs to be the heartbeat of when we listen for God. Can I tell you, first of all, in this message I'm ready to hear, there's an expressed request. There's an expressed request. First he says, speak. Speak, Lord, for thy servant here. Speak, Lord. You know what he's saying? God, I'm asking you. Listen, I'm asking you to talk to me. I'm asking you to show me something. I'm asking you to open my eyes to what I need here. Listen, there's an expressed request. Can I ask you this real simply? This is not going to be rocket science, science today. This is not going to be something you've never heard before, guys. But can I ask you? Do you ever ask God to talk to you? Amen. Amen. Do you ever ask God, God, I need help. Listen, you may have been lusting all week and proud all week and flying off the handle all week and had an attitude with your parents all week. Do you ever ask God, God, I need some help. A lot of us, we think we got it all figured out. I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. I don't need your help. And we don't just say that to our teachers and our parents. We say that to God, I'm good, I don't need your help. You better watch it. You're going to blow your life up. You're going to run your life head on into a brick wall if you keep living like that. Can I warn you today, hey, and, 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 and ask you and beg you to ask God. God, how should I live? God, how should I make these decisions? God, how should I live my life? God, what kind of girl should I pursue? God, what kind of friend should I have? God, how do you want me to handle this situation? Listen, we face challenges in life, but do you ever ask God? I like that he tells Samuel, Samuel learned it well. When God showed up the next time, he was ready. He was ready, and you know, he says, speak, speak, Lord. I need to hear from you. Do you ever ask God to speak to you? Do, do you ever get in church and say, God, I don't want just another routine. God, I don't want to just let the 45 minutes go by of preaching. God, I don't want to just let the preacher get up and tell some jokes and tell some stories and, and go through the motions. God, I need you to give me something. Have you ever asked that? Or has it been a long time since you asked that? Guys, we need to get back to that and express request. Listen, you know why I believe he told Samuel to say this? Because there was a drive, there was a hunger, there was an appetite, there was a thirst inside of him. And you know what he's saying? Nothing else in this world satisfies. Nothing else in this world satisfies. Listen to me, guys. TV's not going to satisfy you, and the Internet's not going to satisfy you, and the drugs aren't going to satisfy you, and the drinking's not going to satisfy you, and the girls, which you're probably thinking about right now, aren't going to satisfy you, and having all the friends, and having all the Twitter likes, and having all the Facebook friends, and all this kind of stuff will not satisfy you. Listen, none of that stuff will satisfy. This world cannot satisfy you. you got to believe that. Psalm 63, 1, he says, O God, thou art my God. Early will I seek thee. My soul thirsteth for thee. My flesh longeth for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. Amen. You know what he's saying? God, I go out in that world and I get thirsty. God, I go out in that world and it's dry. There's no sustainment. There's no satisfaction. There's no help. There's no joy. There's nothing that gives me what I need. God, I need it from you. And guys, we need to have this same passion in our hearts like, like Samuel did, like David did in Psalm 63. He's saying, God, no, nowhere else can I get it. Right. Guys, you can try to fill your life with money and with stuff and with friends and with females and with all this kind of stuff, with parties and with drinking and with, with all the fun of the world, but it will never satisfy you. Only Jesus can give you the abundant life. Only he can. Only he promises that he can give you love and joy and peace. But you got to do it his way. Mm -hmm. And if you're disobeying him, don't expect to get it. 
He had a drive. He had, he had that realization that the world doesn't satisfy. It was a deep desire that he had. And let me tell you something, guys. If you really want God to speak to you, you've got to distance yourself from some other things. Ephesians 5 says, have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Listen, you can't be watching just whatever on the TV, girls taking their clothes off, people cussing, people talking dirty, all kinds of innuendos and hinting around about sensual, sexual, nasty things. You can't have that on a Saturday night and then show up Sunday morning and say, God, speak to me. It ain't going to happen. Right. It's not going to happen, guys. Listen, you've got to push those other things away so you can say, God, speak to me. And God says, okay, you're serious. I'm coming for you now. Amen. I'll give you something now. But you can't play it both ways. The Bible says no man can serve two masters. Either you're going to love the one and hate the other, hold the one and despise the other. You can't have it both ways. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. We have all kinds of Christian young men that they're trying to jump back and forth, jump back and forth. It will never work. Choose you this day whom you will serve. You can't jump back and forth from place to place. The express request, again, have you ever asked God, or has it been a long time since you asked God to speak to you? You know what? You shouldn't just do that when you hear preaching. You should do that before you open your Bible to read it every day. Amen. Amen. The express request. He says, speak, Lord. You know what he's saying? God, give me something. God, give me what I need. Open my eyes. Give me something here. you got to distance yourself from other things through desire. A man having separated himself, seeketh and intermeddled with all wisdom. Listen, you have to step away from something so God can speak to you. Hey, guys, if you're trying to flirt with every female that comes by you, don't expect God to speak to you very much. Amen. If you're trying to be cool with all your friends and you'll say any, any nasty word and you'll do any kind of wicked thing to, to get their approval and get their liking you, listen, don't expect God to speak to you. You have to say no to some things so you can say yes to God's word. And he's saying, God, declare it. Speak it to me. I'm asking you. When's the last time you voiced that to God? And he says, God, I need to discern these things. Give me understanding. Open down my eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of your world, out of your law. God, I need some stuff for today. Hey, guys, when God gives you something, you ought to write it down. Amen. You ought to write it down so it can, you can hold on to that. Listen, the devil's coming after you to beat you down and to destroy your life and to tear you to shreds. When God speaks to you, you better make that a priority. You say, God, I'm going to think on this. I'm going to memorize this. I'm going to work on this. I'm going to try to implement this into my life. I'm going to try to do something with it now. you got to get moving with it. There's an express request. Can I tell you, secondly, though, there's an elevated respect. Notice what he says, verse number nine, toward the end. Speak, Lord. Speak, Lord, for thy servant here. Speak, Lord, for thy servant here. And listen, he doesn't just say, God, I need you to speak. I need you to speak. I need you to speak. You know what he's saying? God, I know who you are. There's elevated respect. He says, speak, Lord. Speak, Lord. Amen. Listen, that Lord in verse number 9 is all capital letters. You know why it's in there like that? Because that's the word Jehovah or Yahweh. Listen, it is, it is God's personal name. You know what it means? Self-existent. Self-existent. You know what it's saying? God, you don't need anything to keep you going. God, you don't need anything to strengthen you. God, you don't need anything to pump you up. Listen, guys, God never has to plug himself into the wall and charge himself up. He never has to stop by the convenience store and get a drink or get a soda or get some, some food or some sandwich to get his strength back. Listen, God is strong all the time. He's eternal. He always has been. He always will be. He never had a beginning. He won't have an end. He's eternal. Listen, his name means self-existent in this verse. Listen, he's the almighty. Listen, there, he doesn't, there's no one. Excuse me, let me start over. Listen, he doesn't need anybody or anything to keep him going. He says, listen, why does he say, speak, Lord? He's saying, God, I need you to talk to me and give me what I need. But then he says, God, I know who you are. Amen. I know who you are. God, you're not just the big daddy upstairs. God, right. you're, not, you're, yeah. not, you're not the brother of the devil. God, you're not, right. you're not just co-equal with Mary, your mom. No, no, you're above them all. You're self-existent. Listen, every, every person and every creature in this world, they need something else to sustain them. Listen, guys, if we don't get enough rest, we can't be sustained. If we don't get enough food and water and nutrients, we can't be sustained. We have to have these things to keep us going. If we don't, we'll die. Listen, God's not like that. God's self-existent. He goes all by himself. Listen, 
There, he doesn't need anyone to energize him or to educate him or to encourage him. The Bible says, I love these verses. Uh, let me actually turn over there because I don't know if I can quote them to you without messing up. Romans 11, right at the end of the chapter there. I love these verses. Great verses. Verse 34, the Bible says, For who hath known the mind of the Lord, or who hath been his counsel? God, God has nobody to advise him what to do, mm -hmm. although we try sometimes. You ever pray like that? Well, God, I think you should do it this way. Let God do it his own way. He knows better than us. Amen. A lot of times we pray like that. I think God knows what he's doing. Mm -hmm. We're just asking God to help us, not, not tell God how to do it. That's just by the way, all right? While we're in the neighborhood. Verse number 35. For who hath first given to him, and it shall be recompensed unto him again. Did, did, somebody, did somebody loan God $5 and he has to pay it back later? <laughs> Verse number 36, for of him and through him and to him are all things to him to whom be glory forever and ever. You know what those verses are saying? Nobody has told God what to do. God's not in debt to anybody. Listen, nobody's loaned to God and God says, yeah, I'll, I'll get you back later. I'll hit you back later. Don't worry, I'm good for it. No, God's not like that. Listen, the Bible talks about how God is the creator. And listen, he has everlasting strength. He's never going to get weary. He's never going to get faint. He's never going to run out of energy. Uh, Isaiah 40 is what I'm trying to get to here. Isaiah 40 and verse number 28, hast thou not known, hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary, there is no searching of his understanding. The Bible talks about, for in the Lord, Jehovah is everlasting strength. Listen, God never runs out of energy. God never gets tired of these and that. God never runs out and can't do it anymore. He's saying, listen, God, I need you to speak to me, but God, I also know who you are. Hey, guys, can I ask you this? Do you know who you're dealing with? Amen. Do you know who you're dealing with? Because it would make a difference with how you read this word if you know who you're dealing with. It's true, brother. It would make a difference in how you listen to preaching if you knew who you're dealing with. Let me tell you something. It's not just, let's go hear Brother Tom yell for a little while until his voice runs out. No, no, no. This is talking about, I need the creator of the universe. The only reason I'm breathing, the only reason I'm alive right now, I need you to talk to me. He's holy. He's righteous. He's exalted. He always has been. He always will be. Listen, he's saying, that's the person I need to talk to me. I think that's important. And he's saying, you know why he's saying this? He's saying, God, I know you're almighty, and I'm aware of who you are. Just remind me, Lord, I know who you are. The express request, the elevated respect. Number three, he says, this is my exact role. Verse number nine, speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. Mm -hmm. For thy servant heareth. You know what he's saying? God, you're in charge as my Savior. We just talked about that. But God, I got to consider my spot. You know who I am? I'm your servant. Amen. And let me ask you this. If you think you're God's servant, what have you done for him lately? Mm. Because a lot of people, oh, yes, I'm the servant of the Lord. Well, how do you serve God? Well, you know, that's kind of my private business. No, 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 no. Let me tell you something. If you serve God, it should translate into how you live, how you talk, what you do, what you look at, what you don't look at, all these kind of things. Listen, it should translate itself into how you live. That's right. My exact role. He's saying, God, I am your servant. Listen, by the way, God's in charge, not us. Well, I don't see why we do it this way, or I don't see why we can't change this, or I, I don't know, I don't really agree with this. You're not in charge, and neither am I. Just because I get the priest doesn't mean I'm in charge. Just because I lead a class doesn't mean I'm in charge. God's in charge. It's about what he wants me to preach. It's about he, how he wants me to live. It's about him showing me how he wants me to live and the rules he wants me to follow, not me making it up as I go. That's the problem with many churches. Yeah. And many people, well, I don't really agree with this. Did God say it or not? Right. Amen, brother. That's the battle. My exact role is, God, I am your servant. We talked about God. I need you to speak. God, I'm asking you to, to show me something. Number two, God, I know you are. You're the Lord. You're self-existent. You're Jehovah. You're, you're above. You're a name. You have a name that's above all names. You're the King of kings and Lord of lords. I know who you are. You know what point number three is? About my exact role, God, I know who you are, but I also know who I am. Amen. Do you know who you are? You're supposed to be God's servant. And guys, listen, when God tells you something that doesn't really sit well with you, it doesn't really jive well with you, who wins? <clears throat> well, I'm just not going to go back to the church. <clears throat> that's not going to solve anything. You know what that's called? Rebellion. You know what that's called? Disobedience. 
And by the way, it's not going to help you. It's going to blow up in your face because the Bible says the way of the transgressor is hard. Right? Listen, you can, you can do that. You have the right to do that. You have your own free will. But if you turn your back on God, you'll see the ramifications one day and it won't be good. you got to know who you are. God, i got to consider my spot. John the Baptist said, listen, he said, I'm not even worthy to untie your shoes. Mm. You say, what is he saying? I'm too good for that? No, he's saying I'm not good enough to do that. About Jesus. Isn't that amazing? This great preacher, he's saying, I'm not even worthy to do that. Guys, that was the lowest job of the lowest servant in that day and age. To untie the sandals of his master. That's not a job that I particularly want. Right. But you know what John the Baptist said? I'm not even worthy to do that for my Lord. Mm. I'm not worthy to do that. Hey, many times we struggle with the problem of people thinking they're too big to do a low job. It's usually not the other way around where we say, that's too high for me. That's what he was saying. Hey, are you too good to pick up track? Mm. Are you too good to clean? Are you too good to give out a track? Well, they might look at me weird, and they do sometimes. Mm -hmm. They might laugh at me. That happens. But you know what? The Lord's worthy of that. The Lord's worthy of that. My exact role is your servant. God, I'm your servant, and you've got to contribute in your service to do something. Listen, how are we going to get the work of God accomplished? By us serving the Lord and doing what He wants. Can I show you another quick one? His eager reaction. His eager reaction. Mm -hmm. Notice, um, let's see here. So, first time God calls him, verse number four. Verse number five, then he ran unto Eli. Second time God calls him, verse number six. Um, halfway through verse number six, and Samuel arose and went to Eli. Verse number eight, the Lord called Samuel again the third time. He arose and went to Eli. Can I tell you something, guys, what I want to show you here on these verses? Samuel didn't know what was going on. God was calling him. He thought Eli was calling him. You know what he did? Every time, three straight times, he ran to Eli. Amen. Immediately. He didn't say, oh, give me five more minutes. Leave me alone. All of us love him five more minutes. <laughs> Who knows when you ask for five more minutes, it doesn't turn out to be five more minutes, right? The prompt timing, he, he says immediately, 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 immediately. You know what he did, guys? He served his authority immediately. Mm -hmm. Can I tell you? I believe if you serve your authority immediately, that will transfer very easily to serving your almighty immediately. Amen. That's good. Three straight times, right? He heard this voice. He runs to Eli. He says, go lay down again. Can you imagine Eli or Samuel on the other side of this? We talked about Eli getting annoyed. Don't you think after a while that Samuel's like, what is Eli's problem? <laughs> is he losing it? Is he going to see now? Has he... Is a screw loose? What's wrong with this guy? He keeps calling me. Nobody else is in here. Come on, man. Tell me what you want me to do. Listen, but he keeps getting up and he keeps doing the job. Let me tell you something. If you serve, you serve your authorities. You serve your parents. You do what they say. You don't talk back to them. God says, you know what? I can use that in my service. I can use that in my service. Listen, when you serve your authorities, God says, now you can serve the Almighty. Listen, a lot of people want to serve God. They can't listen to their parents. Mm, wow. Look at that. Now, a lot of people want to serve God, but they can't honor their pastor. Mm. Wow. They can't honor their leaders. Listen, a lot of guys I've had in class, they want to preach, but when I tell them to do something, well, I don't really think that matches my capabilities. Mm -hmm. wow. I don't really think you have the capability to, to get up there and preach and tell other people what to do. Amen. Right? Yep. The eager reaction that he had a prompt time, and as soon as he was told what to do, he got on it. He was into it. He did it. And that can, that can be transferred very easily from serving your authorities to serving the ultimate authority of God. Listen, you say, Brother Tom, what am I supposed to do in my life right now? Honor your parents. Amen. Obey your parents. Be a good student. Oh, man, be a good student. Yeah, be a good student because that's your job right now. Listen, some of you want to grow up too fast and you want, to, you want everybody to think you're a superstar, but you can't even get good grades in school. And it has, listen, it has nothing to do with your intellectual ability. Some of you are smart. You're just lazy. Right. Listen, you expect someone to pay you a bunch of money to do some job when you can't even pass your classes. I'm not trying to beat anybody up. I'm not picking on people that aren't so bright. Some of you guys are bright. You just don't push yourself. Mm -hmm. You're not going to turn into some superstar just by accident. It's by you working hard with whatever opportunity you have. You may not have this opportunity, but if you have this one, do your best at it. Right. How about Joseph? Yeah, yeah. Guys, 
They threw him in. He was a slave. Anybody want to be that? No. He was a slave, but you know what? He did the best he could in there. Right. How'd that work out on him? He got lied on. Wasn't yeah. his fault. Didn't do anything wrong. Got lied on, got thrown in jail. You know what he did in jail? He made the best of it. He did the best he could. He was a testimony to those other guys. He did everything he could in jail. And you know what? Because he helped these two guys out that had dreams. Years later, after one of them forgot him, the Pharaoh has a dream. And the butler says, oh, man, you know what? I forgot this guy. But there is a guy that I was with in prison when you were mad at me, Pharaoh. He can help you out. You know why that happened? Because he made the best of it as a slave. He made the best of it as a prisoner. And then you know what they said? Why don't we put you as second in charge over the whole nation of Egypt? Wow. Mm -hmm. Why? Because he made the best of it down here. Some of you are crying about the situation you're in so much. Oh, man, I can, it's terrible what I have to go through. Just make the best of it. Right. Listen, we know things are tough in this world. We know things aren't perfect. We're not in heaven. We are in a cursed earth. We all know that. Make the best of it now. If you ever want God to give you more, be faithful with what you have now. You're faithful in that which is least, but you can be faithful in that which is much. And guys, can I tell you that's proper treatment? That's the way it should be? Listen, it should be when God tells us to do something. We do it. And God help us all when we hesitate and say, I'm not sure. Uh, I don't know. Let's get at it. He says, listen, if I be a father, where is my honor? If God is our father, where is his honor? Listen, if we say that we love him, then we better obey him and do what he says. Mm -hmm. Point number five and nine. And can I tell you, this will be the result. Most of these things will be evident in your life if you do what we talked about. If you ask God to speak to you. If you know who he is. If you know who you are as his servant as and when you serve him immediately. Hey, guys, there's too much of this where I say, hey, or whoever. Hey, can you do this for me? Yeah, 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 I'll get to it. I'll get to it. I'll get to it. You know what happens? I would say 90% of the time, they never do it. Mm -hmm. They never do it. You know what? The bigger problem, though, I think a lot of people do it with God. Oh, yeah, I plan on serving God one day. If you plan on serving God one day, why don't you plan to start today? Mm -hmm. Right. You plan to start reading your Bible when, when all this is over. You plan once you get back in school. No, 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 it's not going to happen. You start now. You start today. If you can't do it today, you probably won't do it any day. Number five, the explicit result. Verse number 19, and Samuel grew and the Lord was with him. He didn't let none of his words fall to the ground. And all Israel from Dan even to Beersheba knew that Samuel was established to be a prophet of the Lord. This explicit result. What happened? What happened because, listen, this is just a, a young guy, just, just, a, just a little guy. He's not very old. He doesn't know very much. This is all new to him. I love it in this chapter. He doesn't know what to do. It would be like he's sitting in church the first time saying, I've never heard this stuff before. Well, how do I respond to this? And an older Christian says, this is what you need to do. I like it. Mm -hmm. Listen, he's saying, you talk to God, say, God, speak to me. You know who he is. You know who you are. And when God tells you to do something, do it immediately. And what's the result? What's the result? It says, and Samuel grew. I'm not trying to spiritualize this. I think, it, I think he grew uh, older and he grew stronger. I think that's what it's talking about. He developed physically. And mentally. But can I tell you that when you obey the Lord, you're going to develop spiritually? There's no question about that. But verse number 19, and the Lord was with him. You say, man, I want God to be with me. And you start doing what he says. Everything you know to do, you start doing what he says. And you'll have that special, special touch on your life. Listen, wouldn't it be a great thing if you walk into that public school, but the Lord is with you. You go into that difficult situation at your house. Maybe going, your parents going through a divorce and it's hard on you. But if you have the Lord on you, that's what matters. That special touch on you. Do you have that when you go into your job or when you go into your school or when you deal with your daily situations of life? Do you have God's touch on you? And then he took it as a serious task. It says, and did let none of his words fall to the ground. You know what that's saying? What a, what a statement in the Bible. Everything God gave to him, he didn't let it slip. He didn't let it pass away. He didn't let it fall to the ground. How many guys have heard so much preaching that you let it go in one ear and out the other and it's fallen to the ground? Mm -hmm. Really, it's made zero bit of difference in how you live. Guys, can I tell you that's letting God's word fall to the ground? God gave you his word for you to live it, for it to change you, for you to be molded into, into 
being more and more like Jesus Christ each and every day. It doesn't mean we learn everything or we'll all have it figured all out one day, but it does mean we should hold on to it and say, God, the best I can, I'm going to try to practice this. Is there something God's given you that you let fall to the ground? Mm -hmm. Samuel did. He took it as a serious task. He took it with the utmost seriousness that this is not just the word of man, but this is the word of God, and it will work in me and change me from the inside out. And he had a spreading testimony. Man, I wish people knew I was a Christian. I wish people knew, knew how much I love God. I love God. Listen, if you keep doing what God says, if you take seriously when he gives you something, you practice it, you do what he says, and God's presence will be on you, can I tell you, people will learn very quickly you're a Christian. Not by what you say, though, but that's important by how you live. Verse number 20, it says, all Israel from Dan to Beersheba, that's talking about from the top of Israel to the bottom. Dan's at the top, Beersheba's at the bottom of Israel. Knew that Samuel was established to be a prophet of the Lord. Can I tell you what the verse does not say? Samuel went all over Israel saying, I am the next prophet of Israel. Amen. Check me out. Come hear me preach. Take my flyer with my big picture on it. Samuel, come to your tent. Doesn't say that. Mm -hmm. You know what it says? They just knew. You know why they knew? Because he took seriously living for God. And when he took seriously living for God, people started saying, you know what? That guy loves the Lord. Mm -hmm. That must be the next prophet of Israel. Wow, that's the way it needs to be. The spreading testimony. And then can I tell you, lastly, verse number 21, the Lord appeared again in Shiloh, for the Lord revealed himself to Samuel in Shiloh by the word of the Lord. Can I tell you, God kept showing him the truth. Hey guys, you want God to show you more and more things? Then you start walking in the things God has already given you. Yeah. You start walking in the things God's already given you if you want to see more and more. The Bible says, in thy light shall we see light. When God gives you light, you respond to it. He, you give, he gives you his truth. You respond to it. You live it. God will show you more. But Amen. don't expect God to show you more until you obey what he's already given you. He showed him more and more truth. Hey, guys, the Bible says, today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your heart. Mm -hmm. When you hear God's voice, what are you doing? Is your reaction anywhere like Samuel, this little guy? He said, I'm ready to hear. Are you? Your brother sent me this today. Psalm 50, verse 17. God's talking about people that didn't want anything to do with his words. Seeing thou hatest instruction and castest my words behind me. You know what mm. some people do when they hear the word of God? I don't need that. Okay. Keep playing that game. You know what Samuel did? He did let none of God's words fall to the ground. Hey guys, when you hear God's voice, what are you doing? Mm. I challenge you, I challenge you, be ready to hear. You say, how do I be ready to hear? You follow the example of this young man. And I promise you, God will work in your life just like he did his. People will start to see, you know what, there's something different about that guy. And you'll have a testimony that you can tell them about him. That's what it's all about. Are you ready to hear? Let's pray. Lord, thank you again for the day. Thank you for the opportunity to open your word. We love you. Lord God, we need to be closer to you. We need to be more like you. I pray that you would help this message to strengthen us, to challenge us. And God, help us to be more of what you want us to be. God, please, I need to do this more. And I pray that all of us would to be challenged by it. And not to be so interested in who the preacher is or his style. But God, ultimately, we need to hear from you and live according to what you say. We love you, Lord. Bless these guys. Help us to be able to get back together soon, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. See you guys.